Hey guys, we're back for the rating climb, but this is going to be different. So somebody commented and said, hey, can you make a blunder every so many moves so that you make it to the end of the game so we can get some practice playing endings? And I thought that was a really great idea because you do get a lot of practice of, with the opening. You get a lot of practice kind of towards the middle game and you don't really get to see much of the end game. So I'm going to actually do that uh, today. Every game that I play today, I'm going to try to make it to an end game. Now, this is going to be a little bit challenging, but what I basically my strategy is going to be if my opponent blunders a queen, I'm going to blunder a queen. I'm going to kind of mirror them as far as the mistakes that they're making until we get to the end game so you can get some practice seeing how I finish out the game. And at some point during the end of the game, I will start playing for real and, and you know, hopefully win the games, but we have to make it to the end game. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a little bit interesting, but I'm going to do my best to, to make sure you guys can see how this works. All right. So let's. Let's play e4. All right, let's just focus on uh, developing, controlling the center. Let's go bishop c4. We're just developing our pieces. And yeah, it's going to be interesting. So uh, we'll see. All right, let's just castle. Get the king to safety. I see that there's a pawn there. He does take it. All right, let's strike at the center. And, you know, rook... Here looks pretty solid. Probably can win the knight. Let's see what let's see what Black's gonna do. I, I might not take it just because I do want to get to the end, but let's just see. I think we're already in a pretty good position. Okay, this is actually an interesting moment where I can take here and I have this move knight to c3. It's a it's a tactic that I've seen before. It's a very difficult tactic to see though, if you haven't seen it before. But let's go ahead and do it. This will be an instructive point here. Essentially, okay, well, I wasn't expecting that move. Uh, I was expecting black to take with the queen, and we were going to play the move knight to c3. So let me just go back here to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, if black would have taken, and I played knight to c3, notice how the pawn can't capture me, or I would take the queen, and the knight can't capture me because it's pinned. And so essentially I'm forking the queen and the knight, and after the queen moves somewhere, let's just say here or here, then I would be able to take the knight. So that's an interesting tactic. Now, bishop b4 is a blunder because we can simply take this. But in the spirit of making it to an endgame, let me just play a bad move here. So this is obviously a blunder, um, but I'm, I'm trying to kind of keep it even here. And if black takes it this way, we will actually be in a bad, a worse position. And I don't say bad position, but a worse position. Let's see what black is going to do. Of course, if they take here, we'll probably just take here and get a big trade, which is kind of what I want to go to the end game. Uh, okay, they do take it. All right, so Black found the move there, and now it's defending the knight, which I'm going to go ahead and take anyway. I'm just going to kind of trade some pieces off, even though this is not a good trade, right? So just keep in mind, I'm doing this intentionally so that I can get to the end of the game. Let's play c3, and if they take, we'll go ahead and trade the queens. We will be down a little bit of, of material. But uh, I'm pretty confident we'll have time to come back. So let's let's see if Black's going to go for this. They do not. So maybe they don't want a queen trade, or I don't know. Let's just go ahead and and take, or maybe we'll take with the knight uh, to really give them the option if they want to trade. So like this is what I'm hoping for. We'll go into an end game. Um, we are down, what are we down, a rook? Yeah, we're down a rook. So not really the ideal end game, but still uh, it should be instructive. Okay, all of a sudden black's playing pretty, pretty good moves. So they castle, okay. Well, we're gonna have to develop our pieces still um, and see what happens. So let's play bishop e3. We are down the rook. Because I sacrificed the bishop for the pawn and then I sacrificed the rook for the knight. And that kind of combination ultimately results in, in losing a rook. Okay, let's just finish the development. And I really want to trade some pieces. So hopefully black's going to maybe try to defend it. Okay, there we go. Great. So you know what? In an effort to trade more, let's go ahead and take this way. And that's going to give black the option to take here and even trade the queen. And then we'll have, a, then we'll have an interesting end game. We'll be down a rook. But hopefully we can illustrate some some potential things to think about to maybe try to come back from being down material. Okay, so black um, actually blunders here. I think I'll go ahead and take it. 
and we'll have a little bit more of an even end game. So if this happens, uh, we're still down in exchange, but that's not as much as a whole rook, so much more even. I was able to get the piece and defend my knight at the same time, so that was a mistake uh, by black. They needed to just trade the bishops, trade the queens. They would have been in a, an end game up a rook, but now uh, let's see what they're going to do. Okay, so the queen moves over there. I would really like to, to trade queens. Um, how can we offer a queen trade here? Let's just go back. Let's do it this way. Not a move that I would normally play. Okay, they didn't see it. Oh, man. All right. Instead of taking it, uh, because the game would basically be over, let's go here and we'll give them the option to trade. And then we can go into the end game. It's really not an end game right now because the queen, there's still a lot of pieces left, especially the queens. But once the queens get traded, I would say we're in an end game. Surely they must have noticed now, right? All right. We have a tactic to win the queen. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I have an idea. I have an idea. I'll go check. And okay, here's what I can do. I can take the queen. I'll take the queen and then I'll sacrifice my queen. That's that's what I'll do. Actually, if I sacrifice it for a rook, we'll have a nice and even end game. Perfect. I think I will. I think I'll go ahead and do this. Okay, let's do this. So here we go. Uh, Black has five pawns. We have six. So we're actually ahead one pawn. But it is an end game, and we still have to figure out how to win. So what am I going to start thinking about? Well. Ideally, I want to control the open files. So where are the open files in this game? There's two. There's a D file and an E file. Now, obviously, black already has the D file. And since we each only have one rook, I can't go there right now. The E file, I could, uh, which is an option. But my bishop is kind of already blocking that off. So maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe I want to fight for this one. Now, um... One of the things at the end of the game that you want to always be keeping in the back of your mind is, do trades benefit me or do they hurt me? So let's just say my plan is to go here with my king, bring the rook over and trade. Does trading those rooks help me or hurt me? What do you guys think the answer is? Well, um, I would say it helps me. And here is why. Uh, number one reason is I'm up a pawn. So whenever you're ahead material, the general principle is trading helps you. The other thing is... Because of the way the pawns are, there's pawns on both sides of the board, my bishop's probably going to be doing a really good job of controlling both sides of the board, and that's going to make it tough for the knight. And so because of that, I think simplifying the position a little bit more, getting rid of the rooks kind of removes some of the complexity and allows those fundamental things that I just mentioned, being up a pawn and having the bishop against the knight on a board with pawns on both sides, right? You have pawns over here, you have pawns over here. That's going to help me. So because of that, I think this is a good plan. The other thing at the end of the game, activating your king is super, super important because you're running out of the big major pieces, right? At the start of the game, you have lots of rooks and knights and bishops and a queen. Now we only have these two, which means my king is actually a powerful piece. It's really good at stopping pawns. It's really good at capturing pawns, defending pawns. So... With that in mind, what am I going to do? I'm going to bring my king over here and try to trade the rooks. Okay? So, very straightforward. And by, by the way, super important feature about this position is that the rook can't come down to the second rank and start gobbling up all my pawns because my bishop is stopping that. So that's really a big deal. If that wasn't the case, I would definitely be considering okay, what's going to happen if the rook comes to the second rank. But thankfully, my bishop is in the perfect spot to stop that. So plan is going to be to go here and go here. The other thing that's really nice about my position right now is I don't really have any weak targets for black to attack right away, right? This is defended. This is defended. This is defended. This one's kind of hard to get to. This is defended. This is defended. Maybe the B pawn, you could say black could attack, but it looks like I could play B3 and kind of shut that down. Oh, that's too bad. Our opponent disconnected. So we did all that. We did all that to get to the end game. And here we go, we get a disconnection. Well, yeah, uh, hopefully that made sense. Basically what I was going to do is go here, trade the rooks, and try to use my king to attack and hunt down these pawns. That's the other thing I should have mentioned sooner. Look how pretty my pawns are. Because I didn't mess up my pawn structure. So if they ever get attacked, like let's just say this, 
I could play B3 and it's defended. Super easy solution, right? Black's pawns can't help each other. This is the problem with isolated pawns. They're weak. You can see the knight has to sit there and guard this or I'm just going to take it. He tries to move forward. I'm just going to take it. So even though I'm only up a pawn, uh, you can... You can't see the eval bar there. Um, you can see the eval bar here. Uh, one and a half advantage. It's even more than a pawn, right? So anyway, hopefully that helps. Let's go ahead and jump into a new game. So again, we're going to try to kind of play at the same level of our opponent. Oops, can't do that with my king. We're going to try to play at the same level and hopefully get into an end game pretty quickly. So let's just bring out some pieces and we'll just go for some, some random trades. I'm not going to overthink this because like I said, I want to get to the end game. Okay, plays f4. Wow, let's just bring our knight out. Take it. Okay, let's um, just defend. Hopefully we can get a trade here, potentially. If not, if this knight comes out, bishop g4 should lead to some trades. d4, not a bad move from our opponent. Uh, I think we can just take this and then maybe trade off some stuff. Yeah, so this is not a good move. I'm giving up my knight intentionally. Normally I would not do that, but in this case, looks like an opportunity to trade the queens off, and here we go, and I'm gonna go for that. So there is a very nice tactic, a fork, but I don't want my opponent to quit on me, so I'm just gonna play a random move here that offers a trade, trying to get to the end game. Okay, let's take it with the knight instead of going for that, so they keep playing. So they're up a piece right now. So you know, this is definitely better for white. Let's go ahead and castle and then see if we can trade. Here we go. We can trade some more. And this is about an end game. I, I think this is safe to say this is the end of the game. So here we go. And we're down a piece. Okay, we have, well, you have one pawn for a piece. So what do I want to do? Well, uh, at the end of the game, rooks are very, very powerful. Okay, so I want to activate my rooks. And I've already talked about it. Rooks need to go on the open files. And I just Turns out that I happen to have two of them, and I have two rooks ready to go. So what am I going to do? Bring the rooks to the open file. I'm going to start with this one because it lines up on the king. It gives, my, gives me some tactical opportunities to move my knight basically wherever I want and create the check, and that's very dangerous for white. So we'll start with this guy. Probably we'll follow it up with this, assuming that white sees this. Maybe we'll go for some tactic with our knight. I don't know. Let's see what's going to happen. And remember what I said earlier about trading pieces since I am now, you know, down, I don't really want to trade. I was trading earlier because I wanted to get to the end game. But now that I'm here, the more that I trade, probably the easier it becomes for my opponent. So just keep that in mind. So already I'm seeing a tactic here where it looks like I can win this knight. So I can move here with a check and then take the knight. Uh, now, I don't think I'm going to do it just yet because I want to play this end game a little bit more. So let me just go here. But I could have gotten my piece back just, just like that if I wanted to. Okay, he stops it. Good. So now, now what do we do, right? Bishop's in a great spot, actually. Shutting down my knight. Uh, anywhere that my knight tries to go, the bishop is controlling. My rooks are in a good place, but everything's kind of controlled. Everything's kind of um, defended. So what am I going to do? Um, a lot of times at the end of the game, you want to just make tiny, tiny little improvements over and over and over. So every move, you try to just make a small improvement and another small improvement and another small improvement. And eventually, those small improvements either add up or while you're doing that, your opponent makes a mistake and you can jump on it, okay? So that's kind of the plan. So what what's you say, well, Nelson, what's a small improvement here? Um, I'm going to play, I mean, I could go here and attack this pawn, but it seems like it's pretty easy for white to deal with. They could probably just bring their rook over. And I could double up my rooks here if I wanted, but I don't really have anywhere to go. I can't go there. Okay. Everybody's resigning because I'm moving too slow. All right. I got to play faster and talk maybe on their turn. That is really unfortunate because this was going to be a good example. Anyway, what I was going to say is I was going to play G6. And it's a small improvement because the bishop's on a, a light square. It's kind of shutting down the bishop. And it's giving my king a way into the game. Right? So it's going to play me play G6, maybe F5, maybe run my king up like this my king in a good square maybe play c6 next kind of take away some squares from the knight just tiny little things all the while kind of looking does my opponent make any mistakes or blunders fortunately everybody at this level seems to be very impatient and so i don't i don't know if we're going to actually get a, a full end game here but let's let's keep trying let's keep trying and i will try to play a little bit faster 
I'm talking too much. We're playing a 399. All right, let's just strike at the center. And wow, what a powerful move. What a powerful move. <laughs> That's how you win a game in two moves, folks. What's this is like what third game in a row people are just quitting on me? The rumors out. Peter Potzer is is very strong these days. I think some people just they try to like play a certain opening and if you don't let them do it they just resign. That must be what's happening. All right. Let's go ahead and just challenge the queen right away see if we can get a queen trade. Get to the end of this game right away. 358 already. We're already approaching 400. All right, he get, goes for the trade. I'm going to take back with my knight because it develops a piece at the same time. Put some pressure on the center. We'll go ahead and take that. He can take our pawn if they want. He doesn't take it. Uh, we'll just develop a piece here. And here we go, opportunity to trade. I think I will do that. They take us back. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll just get our pawns in the center and continue developing our pieces. The queens are off. I would like to trade a few more pieces to really get into the end of the game. Uh, let's see if we can go for this guy over here. I'm giving this pawn, obviously, for free, but um, really I have a nice move to follow up. Okay, saves the knight. Let's try again. And yes, I understand I'm giving this up for free. It's not really a great move, but trying to move the game along. Okay, so uh, I think what I'll do is castle and uh, give white the option to take that. Connected? I don't think so. So I'm hoping, yes, perfect, great, 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 great. So here we go. I'm gonna keep trading. I have a really nice move here. I'm not gonna do it. I don't want my opponent to resign. I'm just gonna go here and see if we can get to an end game. You don't wanna take, but I'll take them and kind of force them to take me. Okay, let's go here, trade these guys off, off and then uh, we will have a rook end game. Great. So what's the, the situation? This is one thing at the end of the game. It's important. You always want to be calculating the pawn. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I have three, six, seven. So it's even. Okay. So I will go ahead and take, actually, this is an end game. So I won't, I won't do that. Um, rather than, actually, I will, I will, Never mind. I was going to think about doing this, but then I realized that the rook can just take me and start gobbling up my pawns, which is not good. So here's actually a good, good situation. We're kind of in a jam here with the rook. We'd like to be able to use our rook, but we're stuck here babysitting this pawn that white is attacking. So a couple of things that I can do. One would be to play h6 and try to trade it off. The issue with h6 is I can't actually ever take this because I'm pinned. So that's kind of a problem. I could play h5, there's on passant, and then I could take with the rook and just go into the pawn endgame. And if I was going to do that, I, what I would do is spend a lot of time thinking through, is this going to be a winning pawn endgame for me or not? And honestly, I don't know. I don't know. This is kind of unclear. So because of that, I think what I will do instead is move on to a different plan, which is activate my king, right? I'll leave this here temporarily. I don't want to leave it permanently because I will need to use my rook. But right now, I just have this obvious plan of using my king and hunting down pawns. So maybe I go here. Or maybe I go this way and hunt this one, right? So this is a decision that I'm going to make. Um, it looks to me like this is just super, you know, low-hanging fruit. It's an easy target. Yes, there's d4. But if you follow that train of thought a little bit, captures, captures, king goes to d5. Looks like I'm capturing these pawns. Now that I look at that, actually, there is rook h4. Maybe that's not as easy as I thought it was. So with that in mind, maybe I do come over here. Because if my king gets to g6, guess what? My rook is free. I can now move my pawn. And this is a really big deal, right? This is a really, really big problem here. So I think I will go for that, actually, on second thought, king to e6. You know, at the end of the game like this, this is my most valuable piece, right? It's kind of like at the start of the game, you have to be careful with your queen. You don't want to lose your queen. This is my essentially my queen at the end of the game. Like, this rook is the most powerful piece. I do not 
want it stuck here just guarding this pawn that it's literally doing one thing and one thing only wow opponent is being very clever of course if i take this way we lose the rook and so i will have to take it this way clever move um but now i'm starting to feel pretty good because what's going to happen here is i'm going to be able to free up my rook okay so how do you guys think i can do that well, I have two ways to do it. I'm going to leave this alone. I don't really want to undouble white's pawns for them. So these are doubled pawns. If they take me, notice how their pawns would be left double isolated, which are very weak and easy targets. So I'm going to leave that alone. How can I free up my rook? I have two options, h6 and h5. I will play h6. And essentially, I have put the, the work of defending this pawn onto this guy, right? So my rook is free, which is huge, okay? And I am going to take this pawn because uh, it's undefended. I don't want to give white a chance to create a pawn chain or something. I'll go ahead and take it. Okay. Notice how at the start of the game, if you were to bring your king up like this, you would get checkmated. At the end of the game, this rook is not checkmating my king by itself. It's going to need more pieces. So my king is actually also a really powerful piece. So I'm just going to come over here and look at all of these targets that I have. So here you go. Target, target, target. I'm just going to start taking them. And you can see again, my pawns are much better than whites because they can help defend each other. Look at this. It's a target. I'm just going to take it, right? So what white needed to do and they're not doing is bring their king up, right? Another bonus tip here. If somebody keeps checking you with the rook and they keep checking you with the rook, how do you stop that from happening? You walk towards the rook. So I don't just go here and go back and forth over and over and over until the game is a draw. I go towards the rook and eventually you get a situation like this. The rook can no longer put me in check. I'll just, just take it and it buys you a move. So what am I going to do with my, you know, free move? Um, I'm going to bring my rook. Let's just say here to put some pressure on this pawn, right? Activates my rook. And let's see if white's going to keep checking me again. What do I do here? How do I get out of these checks? Well, you can walk towards the rook. Now there's also, um, other options. So like, for example, I could run this way and go behind the pawn. Right? So you want to kind of look at what's going on on the board. There might be pawns or pieces that you can hide behind, or you keep walking towards the rook. Now, in this particular case, if I walk towards the rook, I'm walking into this and this. So I have to kind of be clear on, do I want to allow white to do that or not? Right? And I really don't because I have a lot of targets down here. I don't want to allow the rook to come down there. So with that in mind, I'm going to go for the other plan of hiding behind this pawn. Okay. That's how I kind of came up with that. Let's go here. And the reason I'm going back is because I want to defend these pawns, right? If I go here, I already talked about it. This is going to happen. Okay. Another thing as far as shielding yourself from the checks, that's good to remember is you can use your rook as a shield. So I'm going to bring it up so that I have the option. If I ever need to, if this happens. I can always block with the rook. Okay. Now what's the easiest way to win this game? Push a pass pawn right? Or maybe two pass pawns. That's the easiest way. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start pushing my pawns. Let's just start with this guy. It doesn't really matter in this case because I have three against one and I have my pieces positioned nicely. Um, another thing that, you know, is good to keep in mind is if you can cut off your opponent's king from stopping what you're trying to do with your pawns, it's probably good news for you. So a five is definitely a good move. Just keep pushing. But maybe I'm going to take this opportunity here to offer a trade. And if they take, I'm happy because I have extra pawns. I'm going to easily win. But if they don't, okay, if they don't and they would have like kept checking me, I was just going to move over and my rook was stopping white's king from ever coming this to the side of the board. Does that make sense? All right. But since we're going to take, here we go. And now it's a super easy win for me. Why? Because I have the pawn majority. I have the past pawns and all I have to do is push my pawns um, and, and it's going to be an easy win. Now, I do want to make sure, can white make a pass pawn? And the answer is no, they can't. They don't have enough pawns here. So let's just play h5. It seems like the simplest thing. But you do want to be careful. Sometimes if they have more pawns, they could create a pass pawn. And you have to keep an eye on that. Then I might want to bring my king over. So I'll go ahead and take this. And white is trying, right? White is trying to come here, take this, move over, and get a queen. But I don't want to let that happen. So how do I stop that? b6 is the simplest thing. Just defend my pawn. It's nice and, and blockaded. My king is keeping the king out. And now it's only a matter of time. We get a queen and we win. Okay. And when you have this many pass pawns, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to do it this way because it's too far for 
king to stop. And the only thing left for me to worry about is what? Stalemate. Stalemate, because the only piece white has is the king. So I do want to be careful that I don't stalemate the king. So the way that I like to do it is always make sure that when I'm going to move somewhere, make sure my opponent has a place to move to, right? So, and then simplest thing is to probably get another queen. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just push this, get a queen. And always check, there's a move, right? I see I see moves that my opponent's king can make, so I'm good to keep going over here. As long as I see a move, I'm good. Okay, especially when you're about to get two queens. This is super important. Does my opponent have a move if I have a queen sitting here? These squares are taken away. These squares are taken away. These squares are taken away. However, the ones that I already mentioned, these three red ones are not. So I'm good. My opponent has a place to go. I'm safe to get my queen. It's not a stalemate. The other thing when you're worried about stalemate is just make sure that every move is a check. You're guaranteed to never get a stalemate as long as every move is a check. All right? So it's a check. There's no stalemate. Because if it was a stalemate, it would be checkmate because he's in check, right? So just keep putting them in check. And... There is a checkmate that I see here with the queen, so I will go ahead and do that. All right, cool. So thank you to my opponent for actually allowing us to, you know, finish out the game and see how, uh, you know, the end game works. So hopefully you learned a thing or two about the end game there. Let's go ahead and try for one, one or two more. Same strategy here. We're just going to play some random moves in the beginning to kind of get the game underway and trade off some pieces. And we'll talk mostly at the end. I'm going to actually um, grab my water real fast. All right, so we pre-moved a couple of piece developments here. And let's see if we can now start offering some trades. So here we go. All right, we'll go ahead and take that one. Okay, so here's an interesting opportunity. And uh, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, so there's actually, um, in chess, if you can ever have the opportunity like we have here to get three pieces, so three minor pieces, which are knights or bishops, so in this case, if I capture and here and I take, that's one, two, and then I can take this. That's three pieces for my queen. So I'm, I'm, I'm losing my queen. I'm getting three pieces. If you ever have the opportunity to do that, it's actually a good trade. The, p the three pieces are very powerful and the queen's going to have a hard time. So I'm going to go for this trade um, and give up my queen. So white's probably going to take here. Yep, great. And now I take here. I'm threatening white's queen, so they have to take me back, which gives me time to take this guy which is uh, great. Now there's d5, which this is pinned. So really the best move is probably taking with my king, but I'm not super concerned. If they're, if they're gonna go there and win a piece, I'm gonna let them do it. So let's just take with the rook, it's fine. Um, I think it'll be a more interesting end game if I lose an extra piece anyway, because the three pieces are gonna be so powerful uh, against the queen. They don't see it, unfortunately. All right, let's go ahead and castle. And yeah, this is interesting because it's, um, Maybe I'll give away one of these pieces or something to, to kind of get towards more of an end game here. So um, I don't want to allow h6 because then if this gets traded and the rook is involved, the rook and the queen are very powerful. That could be very dangerous. So a simple thing here, I think, is to play h6 to kind of just shut that down. And if g4 happens, I'll probably play f6 to really shut it down. Oh, I can't play f6 because of this. Well... I'll probably counterattack this, and then I'll play f6 or something to, to shut down the, the attack. Ooh. Okay, not a great move by our opponent. I'm going to pretend like I didn't see that. I'm going to pretend like I didn't see that and just capture this pawn. Because we need the game to, to keep going. I think this is going to be an interesting endgame if we leave white have the queen. So let's... Ah, uh, you know what I could do? I could, I could sacrifice this. We might get another rook ending. Yeah, okay. We'll do it this way. And then we'll give up the bishop and we'll have a rook ending and we'll we'll go from there. Not as interesting as the three pieces versus the queen, but at this level it wasn't gonna really work out that way anyway. So we'll we'll just keep going. All right, let's 
let's give up this bishop. Um, how do I want to do that? We'll just give it to him in a, in a good square so he gets a good move out of it. Okay, so here we go. So what's the situation? One, two, three, four, five, and we have six. We're up a pawn. However, remember this time we're the one who, who has the messed up pawns. So that's something that I'm going to be thinking about. Now, in this position, what are the most valuable pieces? These two rooks. This one's already kind of doing a nice job attacking this. This one's doing nothing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is activate this guy, right? Try to use the strongest pieces that you have. Try to use them as much as you can. All right. Especially, especially at the end of the game. Okay. So what do we want to do now? There's always this question at the end of the game, especially in like rook endings of, do I want to defend or do I want to counterattack? Right. Do I want to go like maybe here or here to defend this pawn? Do I want to counterattack? Now, one thing I want to point out is a move like this. I'm never going to play that move. I'm never going to play it. Why? When you put your rook behind a pawn like this, it's just stuck and it only does one thing. You don't want your rooks to only be doing one thing. You always want them to be doing two or three or four things, right? Imagine if you have a rook, you know, smack dab in the center of the board, it might be controlling this and attacking this and controlling this and controlling this. like four things, right? Like that's good. Um, I don't want to put it here. If I am going to defend this pawn, I might consider here because then I'm defending and I'm also attacking and let's something and I'm also defending this. So that's kind of like doing three things at the same time. Or I might just ignore it and go on the counter attack here. Maybe I'm going to go for this pawn or something, right? I think it does make sense to defend this and use this as an opportunity to potentially double up my rooks. So I am going to move one of these rooks. And I believe I want to move this one. And the reason is I want this rook to stay defending here while this rook has the option to actually move and capture that. So if white like moves back here or something, I would be able to take this and I'm still not at risk of losing my pawn. Okay, but they don't. They're actually doing a good job bringing the king forward. That's a pretty good move, which I should probably be thinking about now, right? So a couple of moves come to mind. Double up the rooks here to pile up on this. Double up the rooks here to totally control this and give myself options to check the king. That also looks pretty good. Or maybe move this pawn forward and let my king out. Now, I'm only going to move it forward one. I think I am going to do this. Because if you move it two, it actually becomes a weakness. And white's king might just come up and capture it. So you don't want to create weaknesses for yourself, especially at the end of the game like this. So let's just move it up one, but it still gives my king um, an escape route. Okay, so let's try this and see, see what white is going to do. And, you know, when you have double rooks, there are opportunities to checkmate. And so as, as white's king moves forward, I am starting to think about doubling these guys up and potentially seeing if I can get a checkmate. So that's one thing, uh, you know, two rooks compared to just one rook is a big difference. So I think uh, maybe I will go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to start thinking if, if white's going to keep moving forward, yeah, there might be a checkmating opportunity here. So I could throw in the check and try to push the king forward now. I could get the king in position first. Or I could go ahead and cut off the king from escaping backwards to make sure that it stays there. And the only issue is that it's risky because of this, right? So maybe I will hold off on that just for now. Or I could go check and then use this rook to defend. That's a pretty good idea. What you'll find with these rook endings is there's lots of clever little things that you can do. So they're they're extremely tricky. And a lot of these you only pick up from just playing and practicing. I'm just going to wait right now. I'm going to just wait and see what uh, see what white's going to do. So I'll just bring my king a little bit closer to the center. Maybe I'll make a beeline with my king like this. Maybe like this. Maybe if I do get an opportunity to get my rook here or if the king keeps moving, I might even consider a move like g6 and, and see if we have a checkmate. Okay, so white makes the interesting decision to, instead of keeping the pressure here, go and capture these pawns. I'm actually glad this happened. So sometimes in these end games, when your opponent is doing something like this, you can use that time to set up a little trap, right? Super common in these rook endings. So for example, if, if white is going to spend two moves taking my pawns, what can I do uh, to the white king here? And I have an idea. And uh, I think if I go g6, takes, takes, let's just say the rook captures, I could go here, the rook captures, I can go here, and that's going to be checkmate, okay? And it just shows you how powerful the rooks are, they could control all, all of, sorry, 
you can control all of this. And then if my king is helping to support this pawn and controlling this, you get this nice checkmate. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So I think I'm gonna I am gonna go for that. And by the way, it's not a bad move, right? Like if this happens, that's just putting my king in a pretty nice square where it helps support these pawns. Uh, it's not like a I'm you know putting all my eggs in this basket of like if this doesn't work out, I'm just gonna lose. No, it's just like okay, it's an okay move anyway. And now, let's see, let's see if we're gonna do it, right? We're gonna go here, and then we're gonna go checkmate. Very difficult to stop once I get this rook here. Okay, it looks like it's gonna happen, right? And this is, yeah, just an example of like how two rooks and a king and a pawn can be very powerful. So keep this in mind in rook endings. We have checkmate next move. I don't really see a way for white to stop that unless they're willing to like sacrifice a rook. Yeah, and they didn't see it. And here we go. So hopefully that illustrates like, you know, these, oh, what am I trying to say? So, okay, let me, let me back up. The king is definitely a piece that you need to use at the end of the game. But when you have two rooks together, you do have to be careful because they are powerful. And as we saw here, white was trying to follow an, an end game principle of activate your king and bring it forward. Um, but, you know, got away from him. The other thing that white didn't do is they didn't use this rook. They just left it sitting there the whole time. They needed to use it. They probably should have doubled up here way early on. And that would have been a more interesting game. So for example, way back here, right here, I have one defender. They can just add an attacker. If white would have played this move, now we have ourselves a different game because now I have to say, okay, do I really want to have both of my rooks stuck here? Or do I want to go on the, the counter attack? And this would have been interesting. We would have gotten something like this probably. And I don't know even what's going on here. Like this is a wild position, right? <laughs> Maybe white's going to bring this rook down and get two rooks on the sec second. Maybe I'm going to start continuing gobbling up. I don't even know, right? So that's what white needed to do. But uh, they, they made the choice to bring the king out, which also, you know, wasn't bad. But all right. anyway, let's play one more game and um, we'll call it a wrap. All right, here we go. All right, let's just develop some pieces here. Okay, so uh, interesting moment here. Obviously, black is attacking this. I'm going to castle. A rook and a pawn, five and one is six points. Knight and a bishop, three and three, six points. But in practice, the knight and the bishop are just better. Okay, so this is actually a good trade for me. This is actually a good trade. Most of the time, the knight and the bishop, uh, they're just going to beat the rook and the pawn. That's just how it works out. Even though the point values are, are the same, uh, it, in practice, it doesn't work that way. All right, let's play d4. And try to offer a queen trade. Okay. Um, well, we have some good moves. Let's play this. And we're going to have to blunder something here in a, mi in a minute. Because our position is starting to get too strong. Let's go ahead and blunder the bishop. Black can take that if they want. All right. Very good. Very good. Let's... Um, Let's offer the queen trade here. See if we can get black to do that. Actually, it would be a very good decision for black. Okay, they don't want to do it. Um, let's go back here. Because black is ahead material now. Since I sacrificed that bishop, they're, they're actually up the exchange. So trading would be a good thing for black. I'm going to try again here. Queen to e1. See if they'll trade then. Although if not, uh, I think the easiest thing is to just win the queen and then sacrifice my queen, right? To force them to trade uh, like we saw in the other game. But let's see what happens. Giving them the option here. All right, they go for it. Awesome. So here we go. And if they take this, we'll be in it. Oh, come on, man. All right, that's fine. We'll take this. We'll go here. Of course, it was a free bishop, but I, I don't want to have too big of a lead going into this end game. All right, should we sacrifice this and try to play an endgame down a rook? I mean, down uh, two exchanges. That's kind of a weird setup. I know. I think it would be better to just trade the bishops off, and we have a rook and a knight against two rooks. I think that's going to be more helpful to you guys. So let's do it this way. I'm going to trade this. We'll have our knight and our rook and some pawns against the two rooks. That should be pretty instructive. 
So hopefully Black plays a good move here, like castles. Okay, that's that's not bad. Gives himself an... I'm not going to take this. I could, but I want to go into this endgame down a little bit to show you how I would think through this. Okay, so 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have a Knight and a Pawn for a Rook, which isn't really, if you add up the points, this is 5, the Rook is 5, and this is 3 and 1, 4. So it's really like only being down a Pawn. And the Knight is actually a tricky piece. And sometimes if you position it properly, it can be very, very difficult for the Rooks to handle. So a couple of things here. I'm identifying weaknesses that I can attack. Okay, so these look like to be the weaker pawns because they're isolated. But I'm also thinking about what is black probably going to do next? A rook to an open file. So that's something to think about. A rook here. But I could play b3, so I'm not super concerned about that. Um, and then where do I want my knight to go? So like this square looks amazing for my knight. Unfortunately, I can't get there right away. It's going to take me one, two, three, four moves to get there. So that's a lot of moves. I don't know if I want to invest that many moves. I think this square also looks pretty good and attacks here. And I can get there in two moves. So that looks like, um, yeah, that's probably the better option here. You know, going for the open file is nice. But since black's the one with two rooks, they can just swing a rook over there. And I don't really have any options unless I'm really willing to trade rooks, which when you're down, trading is probably not the, the thing that you want to do. So I'm going to try to keep these pieces on the board. And so I will just bring my knight over to this c5 square. And that the reason that this square is the one that I'm picking is because there's no pawns that can attack it. Okay. So like, I'm not going to pick this square to put my knight because this pawn could just come up here and attack it right on c5. There's no pawns. They're, they're gone. These pawns are gone. And it's got this guy. So it's a bo bonus of like, this knight is now kind of like a monster. It's just going to sit there and be annoying and threaten forks and threaten this pawn, right? And even if this pawn comes under attack, I can always play c3. And that's probably what I'm going to do. Let's just go ahead and just solidify everything nice and pretty. Okay. So now what are we going to do? Well, since my opponent did not block off my king, I'm going to use this opportunity to activate my king. So let's go ahead and take the time to do that. Especially when you're down, right? You need to activate as many pieces as you can. All right, so where do I want to move to? Um, you could go to G3, but generally speaking, the center of the board gives you more options, right? Because if I'm at the center, if I want to go over and get these pawns, I can. If I want to go over and get these pawns, I can. So I'm going to go to E3 with that in mind. Now, ooh, good move by our opponent. Good move. So... This is a tricky position. Of course, I don't want to take because tactically I just lose my knight. So that's important. Even at the end of the game, you still have to pay attention to the basic tactics or you will lose pieces. Um, it looks like they want to take, which is actually pretty dangerous because my rook is back here, right? So my top priority right now is getting out of this, getting out of this. How do I do that? Probably I'm just going to move over king to d3 because then if they take me, um, you know, I have time to trade or do whatever. Um, I could also throw in a check, but then the king can just step forward and I don't really see what my follow-up is going to be. Um, I guess I could also move the rook away and then the idea is to take here, but that, that just doesn't look as good as moving my king here. I, I think I want to get here. I want to try to get away from the rooks, right? Like we saw how powerful those were. So let's say king d3, maybe king c4. And if this happens, I would probably be obligated to trade at that point. Is not really ideal, but it's sometimes you don't have an option. Now, if I go here, I am worried about this move right here. That's a that's a very oh no, I have a fork. Never mind. I was gonna say I'm worried about this because all my pawns would be like sitting ducks. Okay, but I do have this idea here. All right, so we're okay. So king d3 looks like the best move. But you can see black's doing a great job of using those rooks and really using their king. So I'm I'm very impressed. Yeah, I'm very impressed with black's play so far. They're doing a, a pretty nice job. So what I do notice, they took away the square from my king, but I can now do it with check and force the king back. And so at the end of the game, a lot of times if you can get pawn moves for free with check, you know, that don't really weaken your position, it's probably a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do it and um, force the king back. And yeah, okay. So again, it almost looks like I can take here, but tactically I'm going to lose my knight, right? That's not going to cut it for me. 
I would like to play d5 check, but I can't. I would lose my knight. So my knight now is actually kind of turned into a little bit of a liability. So I think I need to either move it or defend it, right? Because the, I'm losing the pawn that's supporting it, um, or I might, I, I either need to move or defend. So I think what I'm going to do is defend it. And the reason I'm going to defend it is because then it gives me the option to play d5 with check. And really, I'm trying to use those pawns. So at the end of the game, if you're down, you have to identify, well, what do I do have, right? Yeah, it'd be great if I had two rooks like my opponent does. It'd be great if I had a couple extra queens or whatever, but I don't. But what I do have are these pawns. So I'm going to use them as best I can. And I'm threatening to play d5 check. And if I can, you know, keep pushing forward, because once I get d5, then maybe my knight can hop in. Here we go. So I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to just, bam, push forward. By the way, if you're playing against rooks, Every time you open up a file, it gives the rook an option to potentially invade your position. So if I were to trade it here, bam, the rook comes in. And now there's like both of these files, actually all three of these files, the rooks can use to come in. And since I'm, you know, down, I only have one rook against two, I don't want to do that. Remember how knights are better than bishops in closed positions, like in the beginning of the game or in the middle of the game? Same thing kind of applies here. The more files that I can keep blocked off, the less effective these rooks are going to be, okay? So I think what I'm going to do next is move my knight to e6. And it's going to shut down this square as well. So it's going to kind of stop, you know, black from using that. Now they can still go to f7 if they want, but it does take away some. And it also puts pressure on these pawns, right? So, and it's defended, right? And so notice how I started here with the c5 outpost. We go back to this position, right? I oh, just moved, sorry. We go back here. I started with this outpost. And now as the game is progressing and I'm kind of pushing my pawns forward, I'm moving forward now to this outpost. Okay. Now if black wants, they can sacrifice that rook for the knight and the pawn, which would be an even end game. And then we would have an even rook ending, which honestly might be black's best move because that knight is just so annoying, right? I doubt black is going to do that. Yeah. That's a pretty good move actually trying to undermine the pawn. So I'm going to try as best I can to really keep that pawn there. So how do I do that? Uh, it looks like just defending with my king is really the only option that I have. Um, I'm kind of scanning for like tactics, like are there some tricky forks, like if I push this and sacrifice the pawn, do I have some weird follow up? I don't really think so, because the rooks are just doing a great job. So I'm going to go king here, defending that pawn, so that I can recapture this way, and keep my knight just kind of sitting there on that e6 square. Okay, he's going he's gonna to take it. Here we go. So Black is playing very well. I, I am very impressed with how Black has, you know, been playing this endgame. They're doing a great job of using their major pieces, their rooks and their king, right? So here we go. Um, I would love to be able to get my rook over here. Poof. Okay, I was, I was worried that if Black played rook to c8, I, I wasn't going to be able to get my rook in. But they've given me the option, and I think I will do this and try to get it here. And I'm kind of just focusing on, okay, what, what can I do, right? This pawn is very weak, only the king. So if I can go here, force the king away, guess what? I'm going to win a pawn. That's very significant. So let's go ahead and play the rook over to the C file. And we're coming in here next move, most likely. Let's black this something crazy. It's almost checkmate, but not quite. So yeah, we're going to come here. Force the king back, and then we're going to capture this pawn. Remember what I said earlier, like tiny, tiny little improvements. That was a tiny improvement for me. I just won this pawn. It seems small, but that's that's a small little little thing. And I'm going to keep trying to do those little things, and it's going to add up, right? I'm also looking for tactics here. Of like, Oh, that's checkmate, actually, guys. That's a checkmate, because the knight's controlling back there. Yeah, that's very dangerous. Aha. So he gives his king an escape square. Good move. Good move. So here's an interesting question. Do I want to trade my rooks? And the question has to co comes down to, can I do something with the pawn afterwards? So check, king moves, takes, takes, check. King's going to block. Check. King's going to move somewhere. I push. It looks like I'm running out of steam. And then black's rook's going to come in. So it doesn't look like I quite have enough happening. So I'm going to play a different move. So I'm going to just go for this check. Um, and I'm trying to set up maybe a tactic here of like, check the king moves. Yeah. Do I have a follow-up tactic is what I'm thinking. Maybe not. I don't. 
Hmm. So again, I'm asking myself the question, check, takes, takes, then can my pawn get through? Now it's a different story. The king's going to be way over here. It's easier to kind of push around a rook than the king. So uh, in this case, anyway, with the pawn, it's kind of weird, but I think, I think this might actually do it for me, guys. So let's see. King's going to go here. And I am keeping an eye on my time. I have to like not spend too much, but I want to, this is important. This is a big deal. Do I trade or not? This is a big moment. So if I take, the king takes, I push my pawn. The rook's probably going to try to stop me. Now, if it goes back, well, that's easy. Then I push it again and notice all the tempos I'm gaining and is defended by the knight. I'm going to be able to win the rook. Okay, that's great. The other option is if it goes here. That's what I'm worried about. But I can move my knight, attack it. It has to go back. Bring my king up. King goes over. Then I bring the knight in and I push the pawn. It looks like it's going to work from what I just calculated. Okay, and since I have to move, I'm going to go ahead and trust that I calculated it correctly. I'm going to make the move and, and we're going to follow through with the plan. And this just goes to show that one pawn that I won and now I have this past pawn here, it's going to be the, the, uh, the key to victory for me. Okay. But notice how I didn't do it before, right? Like I had the option back here to like trade and I waited until it was the right time. Okay. So here we go. This is what I calculated. We attack this guy and I go back. And then I'm going to bring my king up, probably going to come over, and then I'm going to attack it and push the pawn all the way home. So it's, it's a bit more advanced. I don't expect if you're rated two or 300, you're not going to see all that. But hopefully you remember these ideas. And as you improve at your tactics, you'll be able to start seeing this stuff. There's different ways you could do this. Like I could also start with the knight, which maybe is better. But because I analyzed this one, I'm just going to go forward with this one. Okay, he checks me, which I did not calculate, but I'm just going to go with my instincts here of like, bring the king forward to help the pawn, right? That's what we're doing. This guy is, is our ooh, nice move by our opponent. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think I'm going to just continue with the plan of like, now he's just trying to flag me, which is unfortunate because we had a nice game going here, but this pawn can't really be stopped. So I'm just going to go forward. I have this, you know, defended. And so that's what I'm going to do next move. Unless he pins me. Oh, there you go. Um, I could take this. That's probably an easy thing. But let's just say that that didn't happen. This is what I would do. I would go here and try to get the queen like this. This is easier. But, you know, he didn't have to blunder that pawn. So I wanted to show you how I would win this way. And so now we get the queen. And, um, you know, basically just don't lose on time. And this game is, is over, right? So let's just bring the queen over here. Uh, hunting down the pawn, keeping an eye out for tactics. Okay. Oh, speaking of tactics, good move by my opponent. Notice how I'm not going to panic. Like I made a mistake. I didn't see it, but I'm not going to panic and I'm still winning. Okay. I'm still winning. I have this knight. I have, it's still a winning position. Block that out of my mind, right? And move on. Because sometimes people are like, oh, I can't believe I did that. And they sit there for like five seconds and, you know, panic. And we're not going to do that. It's still a winning position. We're fine. And that happens sometimes in time pressure, right? Like you make a mistake, keep moving forward. Like it happens, it happens to everybody. Get the queen, take the pawn, win the game. Okay. And let's go for check. And I'm trying to make this easy on myself. Perfect. And so we'll just get another queen and we'll win. And 20 seconds is plenty of time, even without pre-moving, um, you know, moves it'll be over i do want to make sure it's not a stalemate so if i go here does he have a place to move i see a place to move I see a place to move so i'm going to go ahead and, and move it and in the spirit of not getting a stalemate i'm going to be putting my opponent in check all right so i'm low on time i'm feeling the pressure instead of just randomly moving i'm going to make sure it's a check as long as it's a check i know that it's not stalemate okay and i am going to start thinking about how can I like ladder checkmate or some sort of checkmate pattern that I've seen here again, check. I'm getting the Queens on different, um, ranks so that I can just go, you know, side by side and make sure again, every move is check, check. Why oh, I said I wasn't going to pre-move. Um, this will be check and then this will be checkmate. 
So well played by my opponent. They did put up a nice fight. And I think we got to see a great, you know, end game there. How, to, how we came back. How we... Well, let's actually look at this game because uh, that was that was pretty good. That was a good instructive game. So, all right, let's go to the end. So here we go. You know, we're down the material. We made a mistake somewhere in the middle game. We're down. What do we do? Knights need to be on outposts. I talked about this one. I talked about this one. I decided that it was too many moves to go one, two, three, four. I just, that's a lot of moves. Gives black four moves to do something with their rooks and start attacking stuff or pushing pawns or whatever they want. And so instead I said, this one's pretty good too. Only takes me two moves and it's with a check and a fork and attacks this. So that's what we did. Black defended it. We kind of solidified our pawn chain. And then it's a pretty good piece. It's a pretty good piece. The king, not so much. So we activated the king, right? Activate the king. And it got tricky. We had to watch out for some tactics. We had to avoid a little pitfall here of potentially losing the rook, potentially losing the knight. So we sidestepped that. All while, you know, maintaining the defense here of our knight and our pawn. Okay, we... The king was kind of pushing forward, and so we said, no, let's gain the space, push the king back. And then we defended our knight again, right? The the the, the knights that are defended are super strong, so we wanted to make sure we maintained that. And then we pushed forward using what we had, right? We're down some material, but we at least have these nice connected pawns, and we tried to push them forward. And eventually, right here, that was Black's really... The first kind of big mistake, they allowed me to get my rook over to the C file and we got the pawn. Okay. So kind of what I mentioned, just keep playing solid moves. Try to improve your position little by little by little and wait for those mistakes. We got the, the pawn and then it was a question of, okay, how do we win this game? Well, we got to make use of the pawn that we have, right? It's a pass pawn. We have to make use of that. And I was looking for the opportunity. So this is what I was talking about. I didn't go for this trade here. Because it looked to me like after this and this and this, I wasn't going to be able to make progress here. Like if the king just moves back, like how do I push my pawn? Yes, I can go here, but then the king can just kind of go over and the rook is here. And it, it just didn't look as good, right? Whereas in the game, after this, now the king is way over here. See the difference, guys? Like kings are very good at stopping pawns, but it's, it's out of the picture. And the rook just happens to be on a bad square that I can use with tempo to attack it, right? And that's what we saw, boom, boom. The king never had time because I kept attacking the rook. And when it finally did have time, well, now it's too late. We've got everything in, in a nice position. Check was an okay move. I was expecting this. And then what I was gonna do is attack it. I was gonna move somewhere. Let's just say check. And then I was gonna move again. And basically notice how we're threatening here. The queening square is controlled and the rook actually can't go anywhere to stop this. And the king can't either. So. It just works out. And these are these are like tricky little things that you'll get, you'll learn with experience. Um, but that's basically what we did. All right. I hope that helped you guys uh, with some end game ideas and practice. Uh, let me know if you have other ideas of how to improve this speed run rating climb. But having said that, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.